Good morning, everyone. Hello, how are you doing today? This is Doug, and I am here in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. I'm actually in Sukhbatar Square again, where I was at the beginning of the first video from Mongolia. If you haven't seen that yet, click at the top of the screen. I'll link it up there, and uh, definitely watch that to get caught up. I think behind me right now, there might be part two of the event that I saw yesterday where they were honoring all the people who had contributions to the arts and poetry, etc. because it looks pretty much the same, like a bunch of families waiting and people coming out of the government building one by one and being honored. Not exactly sure, but we're not gonna stick around today to find out because we're going off to a different part of Ulaanbaatar to see some more of the cultural sites around this capital city of Mongolia. So, first place we are going is called Gandan Monastery. Apparently, it is one of the best preserved Buddhist monasteries in the city of Ulaanbaatar. The real name is actually a bit longer and I need to read it because it's kind of hard. It's Gandan, Gandan Tek, Gandan, Gandan, Gandan Tekchin. Gandan Tekchinlin, Gandan Tekchinlin Monastery, okay? So we're gonna head over there, and at the end of the video, I'm hopefully going to go up a mountain to this communist memorial site and get an amazing view of the city. And it's just a really, really cool city, and I think having that viewpoint of the city is going to be incredible. So stick around, but right now, let's head over to Gandan Monastery. Sembanu to, uh, sorry, Gandan Monastery? Thank you. Okay, so that taxi ride was easily like at least 25 minutes long because of all the traffic. And it came out to $1.78 US, which is just crazy. It's kind of interesting. We were driving through some of the back roads, literally right in the center of the capital, but the, the buildings change a lot. Like it feels like you're in a small town all of a sudden, but then you come out here and you're back in like modern city architecture. Okay, anyway, here we go. This must be Gandan Monastery. Let's head inside and see if we're in the right place. Ticket office. Beautiful gate by the entrance. Okay, so with the ticket you get actually a really nice map with a bunch of information about all the different locations here and uh, some rules about you know, what you should and should not do in an active monastery, including not touching the altars, no flash photography, no food and beverage, silence your cell phones, don't feed animals, and things like that. So it's just about respecting the site. Man, I'm telling you guys, Mongolian is so hard. The accent, like the way they pronounce the words, is so complicated. <laughs> like if I was reading the name of this monastery, I would say Gandan Teg Chenling. But when you hear a Mongolian person say it, it sounds kind of like Gandan Teg Chenling. It's like very throat pronounced. It's like a lot of consonant sounds and it's just, it's very difficult to understand. <laughs> it took me a while to tell my cab driver where I wanted to go. It's unlike any language I've heard before. So apparently this monastery was built in 1727. The name in Tibetan actually means great place of complete joy. Great name, I love that. And apparently there are 150 monks in residence here at any one given time. So you can see a few monks walking around, both young and old, you know, they stay here to learn about Buddhism and, and live that lifestyle. But let's go explore it a little bit. It's very, very beautiful, very peaceful. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of people come and spin these wheels like this. So these are called prayer wheels, and written on them are prayers. And apparently in Buddhism, when you spin it, it's supposed to have the same effect as reciting a prayer. So people will walk down and spin them, and it has the same effect as reciting a prayer. So Mongolia has a really rich history of Buddhism, but unfortunately during the communist years, starting in like the 1920s, Buddhists were heavily, heavily repressed, and a lot of the history and culture of Buddhism in Mongolia was destroyed. And you can definitely still see the effects of that repression in Mongolia today, because while about 50% of the country identifies as Buddhist, another 40% identifies as atheist. You know, as in the Soviet Union and a lot of other communist countries, religion was looked down on and repressed because, you know, you're only supposed to worship the state or the party. So it was the same here, and it wasn't until the 90s, the early 90s, when communism fell in a lot of the world, including Mongolia, that Buddhism was finally able 
to kind of re-emerge, but unfortunately a lot of the sites have been destroyed. Thankfully there are still some of them, like this Gandan Monastery, that have been preserved or restored since the 90s. There are several like wedding parties happening right now with photos and stuff. It's very cool to see, everyone's dressed up nicely. And yeah, like I said, there's more than one here at the moment. Okay guys, so I just went inside the main temple here at the monastery and I didn't want to speak while I was recording in there because it's a pretty special kind of sacred place. So I'm just gonna do a voiceover right now. So inside this main temple of the monastery is a statue of Avalokitesvara. So this statue was actually dismantled by the Russian troops in 1938, you know, relating back to what I said before about the repression of religion and Buddhism here in Mongolia during the communist years, but it was rebuilt in 1996, funded by donations by Mongolian people. And it is actually the tallest indoor statue in the world. So Mongolia has a lot of statue world records. More on that coming up, but this statue is 26.5 meters or 87 feet tall. It's absolutely incredible, very, very beautiful, and surrounded by prayer wheels and other Buddhist symbols. Very unique place. Highly recommend you come and visit here if you're in Ulaanbaatar. I've never seen anything like it before. All right, guys, so I am going to head out of the monastery now and hopefully grab a bite to eat, and then we're going to continue on to an amazing viewpoint of the city and also apparently a pretty cool communist site. It's gonna be incredible. Here we go. All right, guys, it's a little bit later, but I have come to another part of the city called the Zaisan Monument. Currently climbing up the steps. We're at the top of a hill on the outskirts of the city. So let's get up there and then I'll show you. So this is my friend Enk. He's a Mongolian tour Hi. guide. Thanks for showing me around, man. You're welcome. This was built, this monument, it was built uh, to remember the Soviet soldiers that died in World War II, right? Yes. Not the Mongolian. So the Russians came here and they built a monument for themselves, essentially, in Mongolia. And wow, yeah, it looks very Soviet. Oh my gosh. Wow, you've literally got Lenin right there. There he is. There's Lenin. I wonder if Stalin is on here. Sukhubata. Other side? Sukhubata. Oh, that's Sukhubata? Okay. He defeated the Chinese, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then here, oh my gosh. This is so cool. Soviet mosaics. I feel like bald and bankrupt right now. <laughs> this is cool. Oh my goodness. Let me show you guys the full thing here. Look at this, this is the uh, Soviet soldiers taking down the Nazis. So they're pulling down that flag and they're putting up the CCCP flag. Imperial Japan as well. There's the Imperial Japanese flag. And here you've got all the military and you can see on the helmet, CCCP. That's USSR in Russian. And on the outside, you've got the very Soviet stone, massive soldier holding, you know, the Soviet Union flag. To be honest, I'm surprised that this is still, like, here, standing. Because in a lot of the post-communist countries, they remove this kind of stuff. But this is like as Soviet as it gets. You can see here, on the flag, there it is, hammer and sickle. Wow. Sukhbatar. Lenin. We're just missing Stalin. Like, where's Stalin? Let's check this side. SSSR. USSR. Right there. Proletari. Proletariat. Wow. <laughs> it's so communist. Alright, so I'm just on the outside of it. It's interesting, like, Mongolia hasn't... I mean, they're not communist at all anymore, but they haven't, like, fully cast off that history, like, you know, they have in Ukraine or uh, other, other post 
communist countries. I think it's partially because, you know, there was this power struggle over Mongolia between the Russians and the Chinese, and they're two different models of communism at the time. And basically, the Soviets won, and they were the ones kind of allied with Mongolia throughout the communist times. And Mongolia has had problems with China for a while. So I think between the two, they don't mind the Soviets because the alternative is China. Okay, and I've been talking enough. Now, check out this view. It's absolutely insane. I think only about a million and a half people live in this city but it looks huge to me. It's crazy. And now you can see these mountains that I was talking about, I think in yesterday's video, with, I mean, just the green rolling hills like right on the edge of the city. The city just ends and then it's just barren landscape. Okay, here I am on the far side now. They're building so much here too. Like, I mean, you've got a lot of these like communist style apartment blocks, but they're building even more it looks like. And yeah, I imagine the city will just keep expanding and expanding up into the hills. Hey, look at that, we've got a rainbow over here. It just rained. Can you guys see that little rainbow? Nice. All right, guys, it just rained again. It's kind of fitting for the whole Soviet communist vibe. But I was looking for Stalin, and I said there's no way he's not included on this. It's a World War II memorial built by the Soviets. There he is. <laughs> Knew he had to be here somewhere. To be honest, I'm surprised he's not front and center. I had to come around the side here to see him. Oh my gosh, look at this. Slippery. Wow. Just beautiful. All right, and we are heading out now. We're leaving the Zaisa Monument. Definitely come check this out. It's an amazing view of Ulaanbaatar. So if you are here, this one is not to be missed. Okay, hello guys. It is the next day now because I forgot to end the video. So I'm going to do that now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at a few components of Mongolia's very long and interesting and complicated history. But the good news is that is not the last you'll be seeing of Mongolia because right now I am headed off to Narantul Market, which is apparently the largest black market in Mongolia. So stay tuned. That video will be coming up next. But other than that, I want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh,